So, the second criteria is for vision. And there are four things that we do for vision. We do uh, the visual acuity. We do uh, visual fields. Uh, that goes with the vision acuity. So we're not ophthalmologists. <laughs> Visual acuity, you do the visual field, you do check the pupil, and you do the optic disc. Okay, those are the things that we do for, for vision. So if we do vision, uh, if somebody comes in and they say that they, they can't see so well anymore, there's a, you have to quantify it somehow, and you use your um, Snellen chart. Um, or you can, if you can, most people, we don't have a six meter consultant through usually. So there's a three meter, three meter solar chart that you can use for, for relatively far vision and you can use the Rosenbaum optic uh, uh, vision screener um, for the near vision or you can download the eye handbook on your phone and it has quite a few um, visual charts that you can use. Right. So check for the eye and book on your Play Store and then you uh, download it. There's lots of nice things that you can use there. So the patient stands with one hand uh, over the eye. Don't squeeze the eye closed. You just cover the eye with one hand. And then at three meters you ask the patient to read from the top to the bottom. And you grade it. And they are graded out of 20. 20 over 100, 20 over 25. 20 over 20 is normal vision. Okay. And Dr. Lars Kachny? He did it for 10 years. Oh, you've done it already. Okay. So the visual fields, uh, sorry, the visual acu acuity. And if the patient can't uh, read the Snellen chart, what can you do? Check for movement, finger counting, or if they can't do that, light perception. All right. So if the patient can't do that, you see what they can do. Right. Okay, visual fields, how do we do that? This is a confrontation thing. You stand in front of the patient and you, you ask them uh, uh, what they can see. And then one wants to, there are three things that I want you to know about visual fields. Of course, there's lots more that you can know because I don't want to teach you everything. And I don't know everything. So, right. So, uh, can I can I get one of you to come sit here, an arm's length away from the patient? Okay. So, so please close your eye with your one hand and then press your eye. Okay. Can you see in my eye? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you see my eyes? Yes. My nose? Yes. My chin? Yes. My ears? Uh huh. All right. Other side. That's for central vision, okay. Do you see my eyes? Yes. The nose yeah. my ears. Okay, right. Now the other hand again. So, do you see my hands? You look in my eye. Oh, um, do you see my hands? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, and now far. Which fingers are moving? The index finger and middle finger on the. You can just tell me both. Okay. Um, one. One. Which one? Show me with your finger. The index finger. Okay. Actually, that's quite right because I can't see it. Look <laughs> 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 in my eye. Which finger is moving? The index finger. What hand? Uh, both hands. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, now. If index finger on one hand. Which hand? Just show me with your hand. finger. Okay. And it's in between on the hand. All right, other side. Okay. All right, now it's the same again. It's in the hand. Yeah. Look, look in the eye. Yeah. I see your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fingers, how do you see? Uh, in the fingers of both hands. All right. Uh, just the same finger. No, it's that one. All right. Good. So first you look close because in optic neuritis you get central central vision loss. Okay. And then. Um, sometimes if the hands are moving you can see them but if they're quiet you can't see them. Mm -hmm. Some other thing I probably can talk to me. 
and then you want to see the far farthest ones. Okay, so now you can test my optic eye field, and I'm going to uh, make something up, and you must localize it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, cover the one eye for me, and then can you see my eyes? Yeah, I can see sort of that. Uh, no, no, let me think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, I can't see. I can't see anything. Anything? Uh, Not. Okay, so then I don't think I should. Do I move then further with the other? Yeah, let's go on with the other. Okay, one. can you see my nose? Yeah. No, no, I don't, I don't see that. I don't see anything. Anything on my face? No. Okay. Um, so then it's the visual field. Oh, okay, take away that hand and try the other side. Can you see my eyes? Yes. Can you see my nose? Yes. yes. Mouth? Yes. Chin? Yes. yes okay. Okay. Then you can cover the other eye and then feel. Can you see my hands? No, I don't see anything. Nothing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, can you see anything? Too far. Here we go. Okay. Anything moving? Okay, and remember that you, your fingers must be halfway between you and me, so everything that you, you must also close your eyes. So, the same I'm going to close this one. Yeah. I move both my hands. Okay, I'll do it like this. Okay. Uh, I see your finger. Okay, I can see my finger now as well. Okay. And then here. Yes. And then here. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> not this side. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, okay, let's try the other side. And then, can you see my hands? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then you'll go like, can you see which finger is moving? I'll see that side. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so. See what's wrong with me? That's your left eye, is it? Working. This oh, right side. Right side. This eye is not seen. The right side is not seen. Okay. So where's the problem? The vision is then. Where's the problem? If I cannot see anything with this eye. Right side. The right side. Right side. Right side. Right side. Right side. Right side. What you did right was uh, was what was good is that even if you if you can't close your eye. You did the whole eye field. Okay. okay. So you guys usually go and you test the outside with this eye, and you say, okay, the other eye, you test the outside with the other eye. <laughs> <laughs> you must do test the whole, the whole eye, the nasal and the temporal field. Okay. So, next. Oh, I'm still here. you still here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Now start over. New scenario. Okay. Um, okay. Can oh, let's close the close the right eye. Can you see my eyes? Yes, I can. And my nose? Yes, I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, look straight at me. Okay. Just stay straight looking at me and see if you can see. Can you see my mouth? Yes, yes, I can. My ears? Yeah, uh, and uh, just that side. On either side. Yeah. And my chin? Yeah, I see. Okay. Um, and then let's do feel. Um, so we'll look at. Can you see my hand here? Uh, yes, I see. Yes, I see. Which finger am I moving? Uh, no, I can't see. Okay. No. <laughs> just, just, just. You can move all your fingers. Hey, so okay. So the can see in what area is it. Okay. It's not for vision. It's for feel. Feel. Okay. Um. Oh, what I didn't check was if you can see my hands. Yeah. Can you see my hands here? I see, I see that one. And here. Here. Still that one. Okay. And then it's the feel. So then, can you see me here? Yeah. 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 This side. Nothing on the. Uh, okay. And then let's try the other side. So block this eye. Okay. Okay, can you see my eyes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my nose? Yeah. My mouth? Mm -hmm. Chin? Mm -hmm. 
So this is a left homonymous in the ambient, ambient, all the things cross over. So anything behind, anything after the chiasma will be, will give you a contralateral homonymous in the Okay. So on the patient's right side, and then if you get pressure on the optic chiasma here, you've got the part in here. Okay. If you want to know more, you get superior control <coughs> here in the yeah. you get a, this side, you will get a contralateral superior quadrant energy. And if it's in the parietal area, you will have an inferior quadrant energy. Contralateral. Okay? But you must know those things. Right. So that is the I feel. Uh, the next thing is the pupils and the optic disc. Right. The pupils. Pupils. What is the afferent part of the pupil? Hmm? The optic nerve. Yes. And the efferent part? Ocular motor. What's the part of ocular motor? Parasympathetic part of the, of the ocular motor. So the, the light goes in from the, from the optic nerve and it goes to the midbrain, the pretectal nuclei, and it comes back from the midbrain with both the third cranial nerve. Parasympathetic the third cranial nerve has got a motor part in the middle and a parasympathetic part on the outside. Right. So what do we call it if somebody's got unequal pupils? It's another name, it's a whole language that one must learn, eh? Mm -hmm. Anisogoria. Anisogoria is unequal pupils. So if we look at pupils, normally, if we are relaxed, the pupils are big or small. 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 But we don't have to see anything and we don't have to go anywhere. The light, we don't have to see. So the pupils are small. And this is how we are when we sleep. Now, what is sympathetic? How is sympathetic? This is parasympathetic. Sympathetic pupils? How does it look? Sympathetic is fight or flight. Hey? So the pupils are big. Do you want to decide? You have to decide if you're going to fight or you're going to run away. And you need light, you need to see where you're going. Big pupils, okay. So you have anisocoria, more than a millimeter at normal. And one pupil will be small and one pupil will be big. And you have to decide from the other signs that you have together with that, which pupil is abnormal, the little one or the big one. Right. So there are two scenarios that you have to think about. The one is where you have posh, uh, small pupil and you have partial ptosis. Partial ptosis. Subtle ptosis. Huh? And the patient is not sweating on this side of the face. He is sweating on this side. So the patient has meiosis. Meiosis can either be a, with an I or with a Y. I found it the other day. So meiosis, partial ptosis. In fact, it's so subtle that you actually you can't always see the difference. You have to close the window and make it dark. And then you can see, okay, but this normal pupil is getting bigger in the dark. But this one is not. So the anisocoria gets more in the dark. And this is called Horner syndrome. So to see Horner syndrome, you have to make a dark. So you can see the inequality of the pupils get bigger when you see the small pupil. If it's light, you won't always see it. Right. So Horner syndrome is a sympathetic fallout. Alright, so if a pupil is narrow, either
either sympathetic is not working or parasympathetic is working too much. Hey, am I complicating things now? That's normal for parasympathetic, that's normal for sympathetic. So abnormal, either this one has sympathetic fallout or that one has parasympathetic fallout. No. Right. So Horner syndrome is not other signs. They've got partial doses. They don't ever have complete doses. Okay. There are two little muscles in your eyelid. The one is the Valter Popper brain that opens the eye, supplied by the third brain on it. And the other one is Miller's muscle. It's a sympathetically supplied muscle. So if you have a big fright, your eyes open. Somebody with hyperthyroidism big open eyes. Okay. Alright, so partial doses is when the sympathetic supply of <coughs> muscle, Miller's muscle is out and then you have this. It's all sympathetic supplies. It well, goes with a sympathetic chain that supplies the pupil uh, of, your, of the same side. Alright, so this is Warner syndrome. Yeah. Warner syndrome is meiosis. Partial ptosis, anhydrosis, and n of tarmos, where I just like it pulled back a little bit. Right, okay, that's that one. Okay, now we've got this guy. This guy. This guy. Got a wide pupil on that side, normal pupil on that side, and Completosis. Completosis. And the eyeball is down and out. Completosis. And the eyeball is down and out. This eye is normal. Looks forward. So if you examine the patient, this eye can look in all directions, up and down. And this one is pulled to the lateral side and down. What's wrong with this patient? The patient's got a third cranial nerve palsy. And the pupil is involved. So it's not motor only, it's also parasympathetic. Parasympathetic. Right. So why is the pupil pulled right and out? Sorry, down and out? Because what can we describe in which after severe movement and it's applies in the as well. Yeah, so all the muscles that oculomotor supply is not working, and what is working? Lateral rectus is working, and superior rectus. There we go. So that's why the eye is down and out when the oculomotor is not working. Okay, so this patient presented with an acute thunderclap headache. And the neck is stiff, and she's got papilledema, and she's got complete doses. And when she opens the eyes, she sees double. So the vision is normal. You need two visual, visual inputs to have double vision. Hey, so you know this eye can see, she sees double. What is the problem? Why does she have an acute thunderclap headache with the third cranial nerve palsy, a surgical three because the pupil is involved. A medical three will also look like that, down and out, but no, the pupil will be spared with a medical three. Surgical 3, parasympathetic on the outside, and then you get this something that can suddenly get bigger and squeeze the blood vessel. What do we call it if something, a blood vessel makes a bubble there? Aneurysm. Aneurysm. And what is that little blood vessel that presses suddenly on the third brain on the usually? The posterior communicating artery. Where are the blood vessels weak? Where they fork, hey? So the blood vessels are weak where they fork. And the communicating arteries communicates with posterior cerebral and middle cerebral. Okay, so inequal pupils, you must have Warner syndrome and a third cranial nerve palsy, which is usually caused by uh, post communicating on the arteries and Oh, that's the pupil. So you must use a sharp light. I see mine's not sharp enough. You need a nice sharp light. This is a little bit dark. 
The observation is a bit far away. Thank you. It must be dark. And you look right here. And you don't come like so. You come from the side. Okay. So you you check the, the viewpoint response from that side. And you check it from the other side. And you want to see if it's direct. Direct means this pupil is responding and this pupil is responding. And the other side, this pupil is responding and that one. Sometimes it's difficult in very dark eyes to see the pupils so well. So, and what we do, it responds nicely to light and that one responds nicely to light. So it's quite intense. So you, you can't just go from, it's like, so there's a light response, there's, or you go like so, you start from the outside and you just put it in the pupil there, both sides. Okay, so now, thank you very much, and now the pupil is abnormal, say so the pupil doesn't respond to light. Okay. So this pupil, and this one is not going Right, so you've got this pupil, and here they are, like, This pupil is a little bit wider. You, you remember that the other pupils that we examined just now, there were other signs with it, right? Movement, abnormality, sortosis. Here we've got a pupil. This pupil is a little bit wide, and it doesn't want to respond to light really. No, nothing responds to light. Then we put the light in the other eye, and both pupils respond to light. Then we put the light back in the other eye, and those people that was this size, both of them actually, both of them, they get bigger. Although the light is shining in there, it gets bigger. Why? Because this, <coughs> the light cannot go in there. What is the afferent? It's the circuit frame of So, the light cannot go in, doesn't respond to light. But this side works, and both efferents work. So both pupils constrict, and when we go back from there, the pupil escapes the light. Okay, it's going to be average pupil of the from APD. They also call it a Marcus Dunn pupil, and you see it if you swing the flash, flashlight, you will see that the pupil escapes the light. And that pupil that escapes the light, the second brain of them is not working. Really So the last thing that we do to see the uh, visual fields or, or the optic, to examine the optic nerve, is we check the optic discs. Right. Okay. So, what do we do? Where do we put it on? And then we turn it. Yes. Right. In the front, we want to see what we want to see. Let's take that one. And then here, we want to see if we focus. Now, all right. If you want to put your glasses on, you must practice. See if it works better for you with glasses or without glasses. Can we put the light off again? Hmm? All right. <coughs> we got contact. Okay, that's fine. Look far. Look, look far. Why do you have the patient look far? Because if they focus closely, we get the near response, and the myosis is far than the near response. We want nice deep pupils. So you put your hand on the patient's forehead, so that they, you know where they are, because you're going to close your one eye, and the other eye is going to look through this, and you don't want to bump it. So you look far away, you put this thing against your eyebrow, like so, and then you look at the pupil, and if you look there, you can already see a blood vessel. Okay, and then we look close by. <laughs> And we look where those blood vessels get together and we try to focus. Right, and then we see the optic disc clear quite nicely. It is more difficult through the um, contact lenses. Okay. And then if you look in the left side, you use your left hand or left eye because you don't want to go like so. Stand on the one side. That's sort of, if the patient looks forward, that's sort of 45 degrees. It's easier, okay? And the patient is allowed to breathe. <laughs> One sort of starts, stops breathing if you do the... Okay, same thing. 
see you see the blood vessels you try to follow the blood vessels and there you see okay for a neurologist we just want to see the optic <laughs> this margin see if there's um, this swelling and then the margin goes away if you look with this ophthalmoscope you don't see the whole disc all together for that you need a gun optic then you can see the whole disc together but you guys have to practice to do this and you're allowed to thank you very much you are allowed to um, borrow the ophthalmoscopes from from Lovis Coffee.